amazing. But we're having now another legend here on stage. A man who sure knows how to weld anything, who knows how to talk his way out of every situation, and who apparently always gets the girl. Give all your AT love for George. And you? No. Some things never change. <laughs> and, uh, and my, I can't imagine. If I ever write another book, I've written two books. How many have read my book? The rest of you can leave. Nobody's read my books. It's the best part of me are my books. That my sperm count. But, uh, oh, I'm sorry, there are children. Well, they don't know what a sperm count is. Neither do I anymore. Uh, Am I talking too fast? Am I being too silly? Now you know why I've been canceled in America from doing conventions. I have. But it says next. Well, I'm here. I'm You're here. here. Yeah, yeah. And the, who is that guy? That guy's good looking. Nice eyes. Yeah. yeah. I like his hair. I like. I, hey, I still have my hair. Yay! I, I don't. I don't have any money. I don't have any friends. I don't have any girlfriends. I have my hair and my children. But that's funny. That's you funny. have great hair, by the way. Oh, thank you. Uh, I but, try to whip it around every once in a while. But enough about you. <laughs> so. It's okay if I, if I let them ask many questions. Oh, okay. They have questions? I'm sure they have. Some of them will raise their hands even. See, there's already someone with a question. So I'm going to do this jumpy thing. Wow, he could be on the 18th. Okay. Yes. What is the most embarrassing thing you had to do on the 18th? The most the embarrassing thing? On the 18th, I thought you meant at a convention. You know, like, uh, on the 18th. Oh, God, I'm trying to think. I don't remember anything being embarrassing because it was a very, uh, it was a guy world. It was a very masculine world. So there was, nobody was embarrassed about anything, you know. It was, uh, it was very rare. I never did a show or a movie like that, and those that that show doesn't exist anymore. The character I played, Face Man, was a womanizer. He really liked the ladies, and he liked money, and he liked nice club. That character is gone. He was a lovable scoundrel playboy. So he's not in the movies anymore. You don't see him. But uh, I didn't. Embarrassing. I can't. I can't think of anything other than kissing your girls. I had to kiss so many girls. And I, no, when I first started kissing girls on TV, I was embarrassed by it because, you know, I'm just a regular guy and I grew up in Montana where there weren't any girls. So kissing sheep was what I was used to. And uh, so it was a big, it was a big. Well, they didn't laugh because so, I know I'm not joking. But uh, no, uh, it was kind of nerve wracking though to, to kiss somebody in front of a camera. No, I, I don't remember ever being embarrassed. Except when I found out how much more money Mr. T made for me. Then, then I was embarrassed. You thought about changing your hair too at that time? My hair, yeah. Going yeah. for a mohawk. <laughs> All right, Pablo, what's next? What's next? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. First of all, it's an honor to see you here. Thank you. Be here in Holland. Um, we also have counterfeit uh, Dwight shoots. Still. Dwight Schultz was here? Oh, do I have contact? Nobody has contact with Dwight Schultz. No, he's, he's a hard guy to keep in touch with. No, even when I was doing shows with him, I wasn't in contact with him. If he was sitting right there now, I wouldn't be able to. I'm trying to be funny. You think I'm serious? Oh, you yeah, what happened to that Dwight? Dutch are a serious people. No wonder they wear wooden shoes. So, uh, uh, <laughs> speaking once no, I, 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 he, he has been my dearest friend and since, since we met, yeah. And he's the only real friend that I have from my 40 years in show business. That's kind of sad. 
Uh, one real friend, that's a treasure to have. Yeah, one. I mean, I know lots of people, you said friend. To me, a friend is somebody you can borrow money from and not pay them back. <laughs> that's, that's a friend. That's a friend. Exactly. And I, Dwight, Dwight I, lends well, you money. I borrowed guys' wives. I said, can I borrow Pamela for the... They go, oh, sure. That's oh, a friend. You're a pal. <laughs> you're a pal. Okay. That's what they say. Right. A couple more questions and yeah, I'm going to sing a song. Uh, question, is it true? How do you know? I might be a good singer. Try me. What did he say? He said, try me. Try me. Uh, fly me to the moon. Try it. Uh, is it true that you cure from cancer in, uh, by dieting, eating your diet? I cured cancer from changing what I, that is, I wrote a book called Confessions of a Kamikaze Cowboy. And uh, I have about two or three hundred letters from people who have read this book and wrote me the letter to tell how it changed their life. It's, I don't say this lightly. Um, and many of them said it saved their life because people are only willing to change what they eat when modern medicine has given up on them. So people get cancers and, and they have chemo and they have radiation and they have surgery and, and then after a while, you know, they're given a final diagnosis that they're gonna, and then I've had this, so he says, their friend comes to see them and says, you know, there was that actor. Yeah, old actor from me, he wrote a book. And he claimed that he survived by changing, you know, so they get the book and they read it, so they throw away all the chocolate, they throw away all the sugar, they throw away all the meat, they throw away all the dairy food, and they start eating what I eat. No, they eat a, a really simple diet. It's very delicious, but it's very simple. Whole grains, beans, lots of greens, and then when you get in seaweed, which is minerals, so it is true, and it's the, other than raising my children, it's the only important thing I've done in my life. And this book that I wrote, I wrote it in 84, while I was doing the AT. And uh, so, and I got attacked for it. The AMA, American Medical Association, came after me. The sugar lobby got their lawyers and came after me. My first publisher burned 10,000 copies of the book because he was terrified he was going to get sued. And then it was bought by another publisher and they murdered it. It's called a murder book. They buy the book and then they take it off the market because it's a threat to, uh, you know, the whole uh, the, the medical industrial complex. There's so much money in, in cancer. The last thing they want to find is something that will... And also, if it's something that you can do at home with a cooking pot, a stove, F fibers. So, but now we're getting way too serious. <laughs> oh my God. And I said bad words about chocolate. I'm probably gonna get kicked out. No, I love chocolate. Chocolate's good. I don't eat it. I don't eat it, but and chocolate won't kill you. So don't get me wrong, but too much of anything uh, becomes uh, not good for you. Yeah, fibers and vitamins all the way. Right, fiber and vitamins. And a, and a good cigar, a good cigar. Some happiness is a good cigar. I mean, a woman is just a woman, but a cigar is a good smoke. <laughs> Mr. Benedict, uh, welcome at all. Uh, we love the show in the 80s. Sorry. Uh, you were a womanizer, a car driver, a sex symbol in the 80s for the whole 80. Uh, did you cope with the celebrity, being a celebrity then? And what car did you drive? So what was it? I, I'm sorry, I couldn't understand. I have my hearing aids in too. Uh, Can you tell? I'm wearing a cod piece and, and hearing aids. Uh, Can you tell? How did you go with being a celebrity? Do you know what a cod piece is? Or? Yeah. <laughs> he, wants yeah. to, he wants to know, how did you cope with fame, with being a celebrity? I just said yes a lot. Yes a lot. How did you say yes? yes? Oh, oh, I can't tell these stories. I can't tell. It. There's people here that would love to hear them. There are other people who get very upset. But uh, well, I was always. I'm, 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 I grew up in Montana, which is you don't have anything like that in Europe. You know, I grew up hunting elk and deer, working on ranches. I was a cowboy boy. Very down to earth. 
So uh, everybody, it's egalitarian and it's a meritocracy and you show up on time and you work hard. So when I became famous for being an actor, I appreciated it and I was grateful, but it, I, did, I never felt it made me special. Good. I am special, but it didn't <laughs> But it didn't feel that way. You feel grounded. No, you better have, you know what? Uh, I haven't, I'm, I'm, I'm not as famous as I used to be. There was a time when I couldn't go anywhere in America. And, uh, well, I got some funny stories about that. Uh, uh, but everywhere I would go, and it was a kind of hell, you know, because you can never, you know, do something, you know, just everybody always recognizes you. And now, of course, I can, you know, especially I don't, you know, I, the way I dress and everything. But I know people who have gone through that and it makes them suicidal. I won't mention names, but you would know their names who were once really famous television people. And uh, I know people that died from drugs once all of a sudden they're not famous. It's gone because the fame filled up this hole in them. It made them feel special. It made them feel unique. It made them everything. So and when that goes away, when you can go out and go shopping at the store and nobody knows who you are, it destroys them. It destroys them. So I never had, that was never, I was a complete human being before, before I became famous. I was, I knew who I was and I knew my value and it didn't come from, from fame, you know, it came from, from the way I lived my life. So, so I didn't, it didn't really turn my head, although that's very, very rare, very rare. Next question here. Um, when you are smoking a good cigar, what kind of music do you listen to? Oh, uh, 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 I, 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 well, all kinds, but I, my favorite music is, uh, is uh, Dixieland Jazz. And I, I'm a pretty good trombone player. I don't play much anymore, but... So I, I used to have a Dixieland... In high school, I had a band, Dixieland, you know Dixieland? Satchmo Armstrong, that, that, and I played the tree, uh, trombone, like Jack Teagarten, or Trumion, or... Oh, all these famous trombone players. So that's a traditional jazz. I, I'm progressive, I'm, I'm not so much, but so that I like that. I like to sing with a whiskey and some jazz and a cigar and a beautiful woman. But I don't have, I don't have, I don't have. And all women are beautiful, by the way. <laughs> I was wondering. Um, there's a lot of building and construction going on in the series. There's welding every episode. There is hammering. Yeah. How handy were you before the show started, or did you learn any? We didn't do much of that. It was all inserts. None all of it. Inserts, you know. It's like my kissing scenes. That really wasn't me. No, I had a, I had a kissing double. A guy named Norman. Norman was there. He looked just like me. So I, we would do the scene. Then it came time to kiss, and I go to my trailer. And sometimes the girls would go, wait a minute, I wanted to kiss their Benedict. I said, why don't you kiss Norman? You don't want to kiss me. <laughs> We've that's, seen that's not quite true, but... Um, We've seen it. Well, well, did, did you did you any handyman? We did. We did do some of that. I'll tell you what I was really good. Uh, but we did. We had all that welding in there. Mr. T did some welding. There's a scene he did where he had, they taught him how to light the torch and do the acetylene. Yeah. So we did do that. I was very handy. I grew up working on ranches. We did a we did a two hour episode. When you coming back, Red Wagon, I think it's called. It. And we were rescuing wild horses. So we were riding horses, and I grew up on horses. So I let them. I taught them, letting me do a dismount. We were chasing a train, and now normally my double, Norman, Norman. would have done it. But they, the stunt guys all realized, right? In fact, when I first got on the horse, we're going to do the episode. So Mr. T, George Bavard, White Chuck, we're all there. And Mr. T on a horse is one of the funniest things you ever saw. I mean, this guy, when he sat on the horse, you just knew right away, this was not good. This was not going to be good. So you, he, there's a couple scenes where he's on the horse. He's like, he gets me off this horse. It's, it's, and, it's, 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 oh, so I got horse stories. But uh, they let me do a dismount from the horse onto the train. So that's pretty handy. Yeah, you're galloping along. Choo-choo! 
Yeah, choo choo. <laughs> so I did that. I'm pretty proud of that. And it's on. It's on. You can see it on there. You know. Nobody noticed it but me, but it was fun. I think I remember that episode where Mr. T. Yeah, he's it's on a good he's, episode. His lines are also that he's. Yeah, it's a good Dwight, Dwight was dressed up as an Indian or something. I don't know. It was. A, it was. It was funny. It was a happy time. We filmed. We filmed all over, and that was shot way up in Northern California. Yeah. Mainly locations probably that weren't featured in other shows so much because you're in, in Midwest USA, right, right. small towns always. But the good thing about California is it's got all kinds of. We did stuff up in the mountains, and that was in, outside of LA. We did things in the desert, that was outside of LA. You know, we did a thing that happened in, uh, in the Amazon. We shot that up on the Sacramento River, up north of Sacramento. And, so yeah, it's got a lot of different. Well, that's why Hollywood industry moved there in the 20s. Yeah. Many, many, many locations to film. Let me check before I pick up all the questions. They're a bit. Maybe they're a bit. There's no more questions. But my job is done. I oh, wait, wait, just. But I there, oh, yeah, there, 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 there. See. Uh, my question is, how many clubs have you been kicked out? How many what? Clubs. How many clubs were you kicked out of? Clubs? Yes. What kind of clubs? I don't know, you thought you were popular. I've never been kicked out of a... I'm not a clubber. I'm not a... I'm not really a clubber. Club. I'm not really a, a party guy. I like, I like to go have a drink, but I don't like going to organized parties. You know, so group sex was never anything that I, I didn't mind it, but it had to be spontaneous. You know, you just stumble into it on a late Friday night. And somebody and, says, yeah, like, I'm, I'm going out tonight. I'm going to go out to a few places, but you know, I'm joking. Well, I am going out, but no, I, that's, that's a good, that's interesting. I've never, I've never been asked that. I have been kicked out of many rooms for my politics. I'm a conservative human being, and in Hollywood, that's like being, well, they, they would call me the Nazi or the tyrant, all that, because, you know, I thought women should breastfeed. That, that pretty much ended my relationship with all the women. They didn't, you know, so, yeah, old-fashioned ideas like that. See, right now, there's like 25 women girls just turned the mark on. What is your favorite whiskey? Uh, oh God, I like single malt scotch. Um, it's 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 hard to say because you know it's it's I, I, I like a really quality scotch, but for me the best one and for the price is called Bowmore. B O W M Bowmore. Uh, I like I like Lagavulin a lot. It's more expensive than Bowmore. So you can, in America, uh, a bottle of Bowmore is about a hundred dollars. You know, the longer room is 140, 150, so, so, yeah. I don't recommend drinking, kids. Alone, don't drink alone. Oh, God, I just read the book Matthew Perry wrote. That'll, that'll sober you up. I did. I was it working with Mr. T? I was working with Mr. T, it was a lot of fun. I, I, you know, you wouldn't believe it, but it was Mr. T, Dwight Schultz, and Dirk Benedict, and I was the quiet one, because I can talk a lot, but when Mr. T's there, you don't, get, you gotta, you gotta be really quick while he's taking a breath to get in there, right there, because he, literally, I mean, you, you think I'm joking, he was sitting in his chair on the, on the, on the set, like this, while they're setting up the chair, oh man, I just did we always called us by our name, Face, or, or Merlin. It was never Dirk or Dwight. And, oh, Face, man, what time did you get up this morning? I, I mean, before I get an answer, he said, oh, well, I got up, I got up this morning. I, 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 I couldn't go to the bathroom. You ever had a problem? I couldn't. You're always talking about bowel movements. Everything. He would come out. I know, well, he wouldn't let me come out and describe. You know, we go, oh, man, I was there. Scene. And Dwight Murdoch would be going all in, and Faceman's talking, and George would say, and then it would be B.A. Baracus, and there'd be this pause. And then you would hear, oh man, do I speak? Do I speak? I go, yeah, yeah. Oh, what's my line? I oh, pity the fool. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that. Oh, God, 
he was fine. <laughs> One time he forgot his line, and we, it was a cover, and he came in, and, he, and, and so then he goes, oh man, I, I knew my line, you know, I, I, last night, this is why we're trying to shoot the scene, last night, I, I, I had my window open, did you have your window on face, you had your, I had my window open, it was a big win, I had my script set on the thing, by the bed. He talked real fast. His mind was always, he was so funny. He's the smartest guy I ever knew, I think. He could talk to. So when we're doing the show, he had a business that's going. He was doing commercials, he was selling car wax, he was creating, a, he had a cartoon deal, and he had an agent for movies, and he's doing, so he would sit in his boat, and he would right have a lab would be sitting here, and you'd see these guys in suits with attaches going in. And they would meet for, and then they would come out. Then the next guys would go in. Then he'd come out. He's a businessman. He's a businessman. But if you talk to him on the set, he's like an 18 year old goofball, you know? Very complicated. If you could meet one celebrity, who would it be? One celebrity that you, they're out of all time. What your dream celebrity that if they don't exist anymore, you could bring them to life. Who would you want to meet? Oh, that's a really good. Could you make that up on your own? That's very good. Who, who, what, what celebrity, if I could meet, would I? Oh gosh, so many. Well, I know, I know. You won't know who they are. Oh. Uh, well, the the, the, the woman would be this wonderful actress named, uh, oh, I just went blank, uh, God, I just went blank, uh, Jean Arthur, J-E-A-N, Arthur, Jean Arthur, and uh, there's a lot of guys, I was a big fan of Joel McRae and Glenn Ford, his son lives near me, I'm trying to get in touch with him, Glenn Ford and uh, Robert Mitchell, I bet, and Chuck Keston was a good friend of mine. So when I was older than you, I was about 18, I saw Charlton Heston in, in the, you know, the chariot, uh, Ben-Hur, Charlton Heston. So I did a movie with him in 95. I got some funny stories about that, but I don't have time. But, uh, so we became good friends. So I had, at that time, I, my boys were five and seven. So when I was down in Los Angeles with them, we would go over to Ben Hur's house and they would play with Ben Hur's kids. Yeah. Wow. Did you like playing uh, Starbucks in Alaska? Yeah, don't you remember something nice for that? Starbucks in Battlestar Galactica. How, was that a fun experience? Did I, when did I do that? I, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Starbucks made me a star. Yeah, Starbucks. Uh, uh, overnight, I became there. I've been a professional actor for six years, a stage actor. I was very successful in New York. I starred on Broadway, but then this, through a whole accident, I ended up in Hollywood, and I ended up doing Starbucks. And uh, when that went on the air, the next night. Uh, the next morning, everywhere I went, people knew who I was. It's a funny story. We started filming on my birthday, March 1st, 78. But the show didn't go on the air until September 20th something. So that's what, seven, eight months. So I'm going to work every day at Universal Studio. I'm living in an $80 room above a garage. And but I, So I would treat myself on a, on a Saturday. I would go to this pub in in the... Westwood, California, near UCLA, and there was lots of pretty girls there, and, you know, co-eds. Now, I was about 10 years older than them, and they could tell, but I would go in, I couldn't get them to talk to me, and the bartender would laugh. He said, man, you, you have no success. I said, I know. I said, well, they can smell my clothes are wrong, my hair cuts wrong, everything's wrong. So, on September 22nd, Sunday night, the Battlestar Galactica airs, three hour episode. The next Saturday I go to that pub and I'm sitting there and there's some girls down there and I look over and they happen to look at me and they went, it's you, it's you, it's you. 
I told him to go away. I said, you didn't want me last week. You can't have me now. Uh, no, I did not. I said, yes, 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 I did. Well, Dirk, sadly, we're Sad, is it over? That is, that's half an hour. There are many stories were shared. I, 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 that's longer than my last marriage. <laughs> Very long, you know? Will you be here the rest of the day for autographs? No, uh, yeah, uh, sure. Sure? Yeah. Because then people, if they have questions, they can come up to you and ask some more. No, 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 no. It takes too long. It takes too long. Yeah, Pablo, where have you been? I don't know. I like they, all the time. They don't You're let the me first know. guy in Holland I met with the name Pablo. Is that so? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Usually people also forget my name and then like half an hour they say Pedro to me. I get, Pedro. Of, I get a lot of Pedro. Yeah. yeah. I learned to live with it. I'll call you Pablo. Yeah. Do you know Pablo? That's what you, that's what puts you to sleep. Yeah. Uh, okay, all right. Well, Dirk Benedict, thank you very much for all of the answers. Thank you very much.